Hi, everyone. Welcome to SBR Sports Picks. His name is Jimmy the Bag. My name is Peter Loshak. This is uh, the Loshak in the Bag show for Monday morning, uh, Labor Day, September 3rd. Jimmy the Bag, thanks for covering for me on Friday afternoon. No problem. You were you were missed. Yeah. I uh, I went 4-0 on the morning show and it, left, yeah, my, that's right. left I, to my own vices. I fell apart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I had a, I had a, I had a great weekend betting wise. A terrible weekend personally wise. Oh shit. Nothing to do with betting or sport. It's it's weird because whenever I whenever I'm feeling awful. My, my handicapping tends to get even better, and I and then I feel even worse because uh, because I had a bunch of plays that I was liking, and I just didn't tweet them out because I you know what I mean. Like I was all over like I was all over Tex uh, Maryland and the over on that one, and I liked uh, I liked uh, Kent State, and I liked the over on that one, but I missed that one by a half point. I liked uh, South Carolina. I just hit a bunch of plays in uh, in college football. My betting was great <laughs> over the weekend, but my my personal my personal uh, you know mood was was horrible. Well, you're back amongst you know, family. Am I? Am you're I? back amongst loved ones. <laughs> okay. You're back amongst low baggers. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just popping up the chat here because I have to wait till they tweet out, which they just did. Mm -hmm. So let's see who we got running. On with the us. positive side, the new computer is just. I mean, when you when when, when you put 12 gigs of RAM into a freaking computer in 2018. You're gonna have things running smoothly, right? Force Jim? twelve gigs of RAM. Hell yeah, yeah! Hell yeah! yeah. I get so, it. So, uh, so yeah, I'm feeling, uh, I'm feeling, I'm feeling, I'm feeling, I'm feeling kind of down, but my handicapping is on point. But then I'm feeling even more down, and I, I like, I took sleeping pills, so I missed most of Saturday. I, I, I hit the morning games, nailed the morning games in college football on Saturday. Didn't tweet them out, and then slept through the afternoon games. So I don't even know what was going on in the afternoon games, Jim. Well, you know, um, this is where uh, this is where life seems to uh, come together for mm -hmm. us. You know, so um, I'm coming off the worst month of uh, my uh, FBR stint, mm -hmm. and um, I uh, I took uh, the first and second off. Did um, you? Yeah, I took the first and second off. Mm -hmm. I just you know need to regroup. Also, uh, I wore this shirt. This is really the I've worn this shirt once on the show. I went 0 and 11 oh, with man. this shirt on. But I figured <laughs> I figured funny. how could she, how could anything get worse than what is going? So I I threw it back on with fearless. Yeah, fearlessly. And I, I have a new system that I'm starting out oh. uh, this month, um, where I'm only going to make half unit bets. Uh, if I get over 500 bucks profit, I'll go to three quarters. If I mm -hmm. go hit a thousand, I'll go back to full unit bets. And that way, if I'm just, you know, playing horribly, um, then, you know, I cut my losses okay. in half. You know what I realized? I also realized I'm, I'm in MLB on the entire year. I'm top 100 at covers. Jesus. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> top 100, which is not, you know, it's, it's, not, it's not like mind-blowing, but it's wow. out of 6,000. That's impressive. You know what I mean? It's impressive. My handicapping is killing it. My handicapping is killing it. I'm hoping to maintain for the entire, for the entire uh, uh, season. And, uh, yeah, so let's get to some. I'm going to try I'm going to try to. I'm, I'm, still, I'm still in a fog from the okay. From We're the coming weekend. out of it. All right, We're I'm going to drink coffee. I'm going to drink coffee. I'm going to drink coffee, drink coffee, yes, coffee too. Absolutely. I'm going to drink some coffee, too. <laughs> I am. I'm top 100 in MLB in covers, which is, you know, which is something. You know what I'm saying? No, that's in the entire season. That is All very right. impressive. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got here. It is, uh, it is Labor Day, right, Jim? Yeah, we got 1130 mm -hmm. Doc Marsh. Mm -hmm. Says, got to love having a day off so I can watch this show live. Hell yeah, hell yeah. And look at that. Going? Brooke Jordan says, hello, you handsome fellas. Now, oh. that's not, you know, no one's banner to say that. That's a sincere, right? <laughs> that means a lot. Cause... All right, I'm feeling a little bit better. Oh, the, someone said, John Royce says, Pete got a haircut. Holy shit. No, not, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, I wonder no. if Brooke Jordan is single. No way. No way she's single. No way she's single. She sounds like an incredible woman. I'm sure and, she and has a, a wonderful, and... a wonderful relationship going on. Huge shout out to Brooke Jordan. Thank you so much for, for calling us uh, 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 handsome. Let's see what else we have. Kobe Valentine says he's hungover as fuck from my cousin's wedding last night. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I don't throw up during this show. LOL. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, try not to. But if you do, try to get a video of it and send it to us sure, if you can. Sure. Uh, let's Michael see. Holthauser says fake Colorado State all season. He was the one who gave us the insight. Colorado State grad. He told told us that they can't stop anybody. I was, and I was going to tell that. That was one of the late games, and that was a game that I didn't even have to handicap. I was like, I'm definitely, he said, Colorado State can't stop anyone. I was at the very, very least going to take the Colorado team total over, and I just slept through it, Jim. I just slept through it, Jim. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes that's okay. You know, you, you can't be a perfectionist in everything, in anything in life. And in sports betting, you know, you want to handicap every game because it's just so much fun. You know what I'm saying? But sometimes you just got to say, you know, j just say that you're not going to touch a certain card or a certain day. It's you okay to, to take, take a day off. off once yeah. a while. But I can tell you that it hasn't been very much fun over the last few months. Mm -hmm. uh, Anil Frank says, good morning, guys. So happy I'm off from work today. Oh, hell so yeah. I can watch the whole show with no interruptions. Hell yeah. Michael Holthauser. 
Huge shout out to Michael Holthauser. I was gonna, I just, I just, because the team total hadn't come out and I was gonna pound the hell out of the Colorado team total over. Probably take shots with Colorado minus the points and the overs as well. But definitely I was gonna take the Colorado team total over because Michael Holthauser told us Colorado State can't stop anyone. He was dead on. I mean, they can't stop Hawaii. Who else can they stop? And uh, now he's saying, uh, he's saying uh, fade Colorado State all season. Okay, okay. I mean, college, college football teams and, and basketball teams, but college football teams can make stark reversal of forms in the middle or late, not late in the season. They Michael can. Holdhauser, you think you're, you're sure fade Colorado State all season? I mean, I think defensively, I guess that's true. Like, what's going to happen between now and then? They can only, it can only get worse. What yeah. could happen between now and then is the market can catch up. Yeah, well, the market will catch up, but, uh, but, and they can improve, but, mm-hmm. uh, but, I, I'm going to trust Michael Holthauser implicitly here. Uh, T. Henderson says it's 2 a.m. here in Australia. I'm oh. up and about. Oh, hell yeah. Australia. Man, Australia's like, uh, like, Australia's like heaven to me. It's this place that people say exists, but I've never been there. Neither and I. I would love to be there. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Other comments coming in. Franco says, me and Athena are watching. Uh, oh. Are watching. Shout her out, Pete. She's been talking to Paris for you. Shout out to Athena. You got yourself a good man there. That was funny as hell. Remember when I said I he's, got to, he's got to let Franco be the man that he's got to be. She's got to let him do the things that he's got to do. Right? Right. Yeah, shout out to Athena. Shout out to Paris. Shout out to Franco. Ski Prophet says you're you looking, uh, looking nice in the IFBC uh, polo. Yeah, I'm wearing my IFBC polo. Listen, my, my handicapping, well, it could be going better, but it's going great. Dude. Like I said, I've risen up to the top 100 in, uh, in, uh, in, in MLB on covers. I'm, I'm, I, I hit all the morning games in college football on Saturday. And they just slept through the, uh, the evening games. And, uh, and let's say... John what, Roy says you need yoga in your life? Maybe. I, you know, I, 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 I would... Yes, maybe. I try that stuff. I get very, I get very like, uh, agitated if oh, I'm wasting man. time. We what, what? got our boy Nut Flush. We got mm-hmm. his family oh, day watching the low back show. Yeah. Bailey, Layden, Styler, and Kristen. We got the whole family watching us. Shout out to Nut Flush 16's entire family. In yeah. the meantime, Coley Valentine says Franco and Hoskins are doubtful today against Miami. Okay, we're going to need some serious. Uh, Jim, can you pull up the. Uh, the, uh, the uh, oh, yeah. Uh, uh, lineups? Uh, what's it called? The lineups. No, yeah. My brain's still a little bit foggy. My brain's still a little bit foggy good. in the morning. So forgive me. I know you will. I know you will. That's one of the many things that I love about the comment section. They forgive us for our imperfections, be they handicapping, energy imperfections, uh, tech imperfections, whatever. Kobe Valentine giving us a, it, wow. So that makes a, that makes a, John Roy 76 says, get an assistant, Pete. Yeah. The assistants ain't free. Assistants ain't free, John Roy. That is, a, I would, I, if I had an assistant, I would be five times as good at my job as I am now, literally. And that's yes. no exaggeration. It would be very, very nice. Uh, Comic Ricky says, can I get a shout out to my lady, Donna Marie? She's watching with Donna him. Marie? Can is you that get... really her name? I believe Wait, it. who says that? Who uh, my says My man, that? Comic Ricky wow. out, of, out of Chi-Town, man. Ooh, Comic Ricky out of Chi-Town. Shout out to Comic Ricky. His lady is named Donna Marie. That's a hell of a name right there. Yeah, man. That's a 70s name right there and only in a good way. <laughs> I mean, look at me. I'm 70s style myself and only in a good way, right? I mean, if I was a chick, I'd probably be I probably look like my name was Donna Marie if uh, if I wasn't actually named Donna Marie. Huge shout out to Donna Marie. Donna Marie, you got yourself a good man. Got to treat him right. Got to treat him right. He's funny. That's the sexiest thing a guy can. Well, no, the sexiest thing a guy can be is rich. But second sexiest is funny. And you got yourself a funny guy. You got to treat him right. You know what I'm saying? Make him happy. And he's got to treat you right. I know he will, though. Comic Ricky, because I've been watching his comments enough. I know he's a good man. A good man is hard to find. Huge shout out to Donna Marie. You know she's a good woman. Oh, I you know. know she's a good you woman. Do. You is do. there any way a woman named Donna Marie could not be a good woman? Oh, my God. There's no way. I would love to have just a, a loving 70s woman named Donna Marie with like those braids in the 70s. You remember they all had the braids, like a backup singer from the Rick James band or that something like nice. that. Oh, God. If anyone out there looks and acts like a backup singer from Rick James in the 70s, get in touch. We well, can, Frank O says, talk. hey, Pete, you only shout out Athena in Paris. Paris what? gets jealous and Athena tells her everything. Paris. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> I love the soap opera this is turning into. <laughs> Twadi Latte says that your white shirt really accentuates your arm hair. Mm. 
I knew that. I knew that. I knew that. And you know what? I didn't care. I didn't care. There's something, you know what I mean? I don't, I don't think it's, it's a little bit, it's a little bit off putting at first, but I feel like when people get used to it, 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 it becomes something that they identify with and feel comfortable with. You I know feel what I'm very saying? comfortable around yes. your arm hair. Very comfortable. Teddy B says, Low Shack Jimmy, show me love for Auburn and LSU. Oh, shout out to whoever had LSU. Teddy, Teddy B, Abbott. man. Yes, I was just, uh, I was just sleeping from, uh, from, uh, from Friday morning, basically from Friday night until, until, <laughs> until like an hour ago, basically. KG says, glad you're back, Pete. <laughs> Jimmy oh, had boy. a male dancer on the show Friday while he was making picks. <laughs> it was very difficult because I had to make some bets during the show. But how do you do that when you're working solo? Mm -hmm. So I would get Freddie to come in and kind of cause some sort of a... Oh, uh, yeah, it was Match not... Match-fixing uh, alert says, despite all the squareness in chat and sometimes by both of you, I respect your show. <laughs> Regards, Lomash. Shout out, Max-fixing alerts. I don't know. I, I, look, I know, I know I'm, I'm actually... Uh, I expect my record to be way worse than it actually is. Did you know that uh, Match-fixing alerts, I'm actually positive in every single record that we track... Uh, that we track... Uh, well, I, I was down one unit in, uh, in, in NFL preseason, but I'm actually up in everything Match-fixing alerts. I'm squarer than that. What do you make of that? Do you think that's just variance? Do you think I just got lucky match fixing alerts? He has a good read on who's likely to be profitable uh, going forward. I don't know, man. I expect myself to be maybe 53% on minus 110 lines. Maybe. But uh, I don't know. Maybe I'm a little bit better than that. We'll see. Don Ricci's right, grandson, four-year-old oh, grandson shot. right next to him. Lucas Dominic is uh, capping, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. playing Play-Doh with bricks and capping. Oh, <laughs> hell yeah. We are going to get into handicapping. It's just a Monday morning. We're going to we're gonna ease into it just a little bit, and we're going to get into it. When we get into it, we're going to jump right into it. we got to go hard. we yes. got a lot of games. Yes. we got all the right. CFL right. games. Right. we got the NCAA. we got the 15 MLB games. we got a lot of work to do. I was up uh, very, very early, okay. which is fine because I don't sleep. All right. That's it. Enough bullshit in the Round. Now let's get into handicapping. Get of course, work. a ton of day games in uh, in MLB. Uh, let's see what we got here in MLB. Well, we can throw the record up. Let's throw the record. Sure. Let's just throw yeah, the record yeah. up because we are going to throw your CFL record up, which is great. If you got the MLB record up, throw it up. Looking pretty ugly for Jimmy the Bag. My record is uh, you know stabilized in the mid 30s. I'm going to try to uh, add a few picks. I, I, I had a, I had a few losers that I tweeted out this weekend in MLB though, which was uh, which was frustrating. All right, so what do we have here today in uh, in MLB? The first thing that I want to get to is definitely. Uh, I'm thinking that Boston on the second half will be a, a, a nice play here. This is a one o'clock game. Toussaint obviously has been has been very good in his. Well, he's he's only had one appearance, right? It was pretty good. Suki, yeah, Tuki Toussaint. Uh, you know, huge, huge, huge upside for him. First start was great, but it was against Miami. Now he's going up against Boston. It's probably going to be a tougher assignment. But where did we see this last time? Was with uh, Kopech, right? And uh, and no problem there. Not well, sure what we'll get. Kopech from... only went three because of the rain delay. Right, right. But, but... still, Toussaint was, uh, you know, uh, not exactly sure what we'll get from Toussaint. But uh, but Aobaldi is definitely slumping, and uh, I like Boston here. It's a it's it's a low second half uh, line for Boston. You know, we've seen them at minus one fifty, minus one sixty recently, and I have been taking those probably a little square. Those are probably some examples that match fixing alerts would uh, would indicate as my squareness and he'd probably be right but I did bet Boston second half at just minus 125 and I'll start out with that Boston second half minus 125 what do you think about that Jim you know I I, I get the play very uh, it's a it's a play that makes a lot of sense Anthony L says Braves minus one is a decent value play Sure, yeah. from a value standpoint, it is. I heard that there's a ton of sharp money coming in on the Red Sox right now. Uh, I'm a little hesitant, although Eovaldi has not looked good. Didn't allow a run in 15 innings, first two starts. Then uh, it's been a, a big struggle since 4.50 ERA and seven starts for the Red Sox. Surrendered 13 runs in his last three games. Mm -hmm. And one of those games was just two innings long. Eovaldi, two and three, 2.82 ERA, 13 career starts against Atlanta. Tukey is a beast. He was good. So we see some of these guys that, that, that are dominant in double A. They're still really good in triple A, but the numbers keep getting worse as mm -hmm. they go up. And Tukey's different. Double A Mississippi, four and six, 2.93 ERA, 1.19 whip. Then he goes up to Gwinnett and he's dominant. Five and oh, 1.43 ERA, 1.03 whip. We were told, and I can't remember who told us this, but somebody told us that. Um, that, that they thought Tukey, if, if, if the Braves were in a wild card game, that Tukey would get the start. He's that dominant. And yeah. That was a shocking no. thing for us to hear. Huge, huge. You know what You know what just occurred to me? What's that? That guy, Max Fixing Alerts, that's a massive compliment there. He said, despite the squareness, <laughs> even by you two, I still respect the show. Do you, realize how, do you realize what a massive compliment that is? No, it was very kind. It's one thing to get viewers if you're given winners, if, you're, you know, if, if you've got a model and this and that. But if you can fucking make a compelling show despite being square and someone who knows what squareness is still respects the show that is a massive compliment jimmy the bag that do you is. realize what a massive compliment match fixing alerts gave us huge <laughs> shout out to max fixing match fixing alerts 
I'm a little slow today. I just realized that. Thank you so much. That was a great compliment. All right, let's move on, Jim. KG talking uh, yeah. about Evaldi just pitching three days ago. That was the rain out. That was the two-inning uh, uh, start. Do you think that will affect him getting out of his regular rhythm? I don't know. I don't, I'm not exactly sure what to make of Eovaldi. Obviously, he had two great starts and then has been getting crushed recently. Uh, I'm just going to take a low line here with Boston on the second half at minus 125. Uh, you know, to Saint. I'm not sure what to make of him. Obviously, he's the real deal. He's extremely the real deal. But, you know, I, a part of me would be would be thinking about taking uh, Boston on the first five innings team total under. But do I really want to do that? I mean, I don't think so. Uh, it's just it's just I don't really want to take that against anyone. But uh, but if I was going to do it against anyone, it would be against a two saint. And I believe it's a it's a two and a half. Right. Yeah. Two and a half minus one twenty four. I mean, that's tempting as hell to take a shot with it. It's just I can't believe I'm actually considering taking a Boston team total under in any situation, really. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, I to be honest with you, uh, Eovaldi's looked um, susceptible. Uh, Tuki has looked good, and, and he's looked great, even. Yeah. And I was even thinking of maybe, until I heard about all of the sharp action coming in on, on mm-hmm. the Red Sox off of the shutout, I was thinking maybe Braves' first five would be a play, but um, hearing about the sharp action, I, I, I kind of got off it. What do you think of, uh, of uh, Braves' first five? I don't know. I'm thinking about under, though. My only question is just what the hell is Eovaldi going to do? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. His whole career, he's, he's made me a little bit nervous because when he's on, he's lights out and his, his, his velocity is awesome. But when he's off, he's what we've seen the past bunch of starts. I'm very tempted to take the under here on the first five. Very tempted to take the full game under. Very tempted to take the Boston first five team total under, even though it is a... Do you have the lineups there, Jim, by any chance? I do. Uh, Twadi Latte says Red Sox game goes under. Yeah. I'm leaning under. I'm leaning under. I bet under. You know, that's definitely in my leans column. And uh, I want to take under. I want to take, I don't know if I want to quadruple up on an under with Boston. I've taken Boston second half, but I'm definitely leaning under. Uh, We don't want to spend too much time on this game, but uh, you can understand why someone leaning under with a Boston game would be hemming and hawing basically up until first pitch, right, Sure, every reason to be hesitant. Uh, Betts, Benatendi, Martinez, Bogarts, Moreland, Nunez, Kinsler, Vasquez, Iovaldi. How's the lineup looking? It's looking okay? Uh, yeah, it looks very... I mean, uh, that, that, that first five is very strong. Obviously, Nunez, Kinsler just coming back, and, and Vasquez is, is, uh, is weaker. Uh, Acuna, Inciarte, Freeman, Marquecas, Camargo, Suzuki, Albi, Swanson, Toussaint. That's a nice Braves lineup. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um... All right, I'm going to take, take a shot with the first five under. The big question is Eovaldi. Jim, while I write this down, can you look for any comments about people uh, on Eovaldi, what to expect from him? Because he's been getting crushed recently. Will he hit. be good enough to maintain a, a, an under here or a first well, five Well, J. Rose says Red Sox couldn't hit shields yesterday. Everybody else does. Take the Braves. Mm-hmm. Tomore says Red Sox are dealing with some injuries. Guys banged up. They haven't been hitting good pitching recently. Uh, Brian Watson says first five, good call. Billy Exotic. I don't know. Oh, Billy Exotic. First five under Nats Tigers. Different game. Uh, Rude Vall likes Braves first five. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, Rude Vall definitely on the Dodgers. So who says Braves, Braves, Braves? Jay Rose says Braves, Braves, Braves. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Flipper 13 says my, my projections say under eight runs in the Boston game. Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm going to take... Russ Woodside says Nathan Navaldi sucks on the road, two and six with an ERA of 6.04. Yeah, and he's been no getting things. bombed recently. Yeah. He's been getting bombed recently. This is when I need uh, Kobe Valentine, Tomarino Tomor, Anthony L. What do we expect from Eovaldi here? Yeah. A- 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 Tomarino says, I think Atlanta will hit a mediocre pitcher like Eovaldi. Yeah, I, uh, he, he certainly looks susceptible of late. Aaron Martin says, Eovaldi will get crushed like Jim the Bag crushed my dog's anus. Oh, wow. That's an actual comment. Wow. <laughs> Flipper 13 says, Eovaldi, I predict, will pitch very well. Ski Profit, Braves over. Wally George uh, wants a little love for his call about the Diamondbacks would be lucky to win one of four. He was bang mm-hmm. on, on Shout that. out to Wally George. Shout out to Wally George. Uh, Andrew says, you guys spent like 10 minutes on this game. You squares need to move on. Yes, let's let them move on. All right. Yeah. All right. Okay. 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 I'm good. Anthony L. likes Braves minus one. I'm taking the first five innings under, and I'm going to take the full game under as well. First five innings under for Atlanta is going to be five minus 111. That's the line at Pinnacle. And the full game under is going to be, uh, it's headed up a little bit. It's headed up a little bit. It's going to be uh, nine, nine uh, plus 100. Let me see. Uh, yeah, it's just a little bit. Uh, KG says bullpen call up may only get three from Evaldi. Yeah, right, right, right. Okay. Kobe says, I expect Evaldi to get hit. Mm-hmm. Highest percentage in throwing strikes, rarely pitches outside the zone. Atlanta is good contact hitters, should be able to touch him. Yeah, yeah. 
All right, you know what I'm going to take? I'm going to take the, I'm also going to take a shot with the, with the Boston first five innings team total over. How about, no, I don't want to do that. I don't, I'm just going to stick with the first five under, five minus 111. And as far as the full game is concerned, sure, what the hell. I'll throw that one on. I'll throw it on. Boston, Atlanta, under nine plus 100, under nine plus 100. I'm still a little groggy from the, uh, from the weekend. But, but Nino uh, asking what the weather's like, 85 Fahrenheit. Wind blowing in sideways at double digits, just 10 miles per you hour. You know, it's, uh, you know, digits. yeah. All right, so I'm taking Boston second half minus 125. Atlanta first half, uh, the, the first half under five minus 111. The full game under nine plus 100. And probably Atlanta on the first five innings is a good play. But I'm not going to take it. All right, All let's right. move on. Yeah. St. Louis, Washington. Anything to say, Jim? Flaherty, uh, Scherzer, Flaherty's pitching very well. Game time temp, 90 Fahrenheit, wind blowing out to left center very softly. Cardinals have lost two straight for the first time since July 22nd. Half game back at the Brewers for the wild card. Flaherty's been a beast, 4-0 in August, 1.13 ERA, 38 Ks in 32 innings. Last out, looked very good against the Pirates. The Pirates club that's not hitting, mind you. Scherzer, 2-1 uh, in August, 1.89 ERA, 2-4 with a 2.70 ERA, eight career starts against the Cardinals. Uh, Cardinals don't hit righties with any power, but 248, 724 OPS. And Nationals hit righties, but can you trust the Nationals' offense at all? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, very, very difficult to trust them. Uh, this is a tough spot. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I, the value, I think, is on the Cardinals and Flaherty, but I don't know if I can make the move on it. I think it's going to be a pass for me if you gave me a free play. Wow. Yeah, uh, the Cardinals are plus 170 at, on the first five innings. That is tempting as hell because Scherzer, uh, you know, Scherzer's been great. Flaherty's been great, too. How much of an edge do you give Scherzer? You know, well, I would love to see what the what the guys with the advanced analytics would have to say about uh, the pitching matchup in this game, because I think it's very close, Scherzer against Flaherty here, right? Yeah. Maybe a small edge to Scherzer, but not a huge one, right, Jim? Uh, I mean, not of late, but mm -hmm. generally speaking, I think so. R2-D2's on St. Louis under 7.5 with mm -hmm. a Nats win, and uh, Dom Ricci's looking at that Braves team total over. Mm -hmm. uh, and then... Um, Dom Ant Ricci, check it out. I'm wearing the Dom Ricci hat. Yeah, I'm wearing man. the Dom Ricci hat. Looking good. Cool as hell. Anthony yes. L says that the first five under here is ground fruit. Not only is it ground fruit, but the... Um, the I always look good on camera, Jim. Even, even when I'm feeling awful, even when I don't shave, even when I don't shower, I just always look good on camera. What a blessing. Like, what a blessing. <laughs> All right, let's move on, Jim. Sorry uh, there's about that. fours on the board here with yeah. the first five under. I mean, juiced, heavily juiced. Minus 132, minus 134 at Bet Online, minus 132 at Pinnacle. What's up with the St. Louis lineup? Is it looking okay? Uh, yeah, why don't we take a look at this lineup, see if there's anything that. Chris Blanchard missing. says public dogs are a losing bet. Yes, who's he talking about? He's saying St. Louis is a losing bet here? Uh, is St. Louis a public, is Louis play a public right dog? Now? That's the question. Yes. Um, uh, not exactly sure. That's an ugly uh, Cardinals lineup, mm -hmm. man. Very ugly. Uh, Carpenter, Munoz, Adams, Osuna, De Jong, Garcia, Bader, Pena, Flaherty. And then this Washington lineup is not hitting. Eaton, Turner, Harper, Rendon, Soto, Zimmerman, Daifo. Um, Anthony L says first five under all day. I, I assume he's talking about this one. Yeah, this he game. Is. Right. Chris Blanchard, Nats run line, first five. Chris Blanchard is the one who said public dogs are a losing bet. Okay, so, so Chris Blanchard is, uh, is implying that St. Louis is a public dog. Yes, public dogs are huge losing bets, especially in college football. I love fading public dogs in college football. And in baseball, it's usually great comment, Chris Blanchard. App dead on, Chris Blanchard. And Chris Blanchard liking Nats first five on the run line. I'm not taking it, but he's probably dead on. He's got a great read on this market, I think. Yeah, and I think that first five under, I mean, I'm surprised they're still fours. I mean, they're so juiced. Is it worth taking that juice? Uh, Israel Williams. Damn good seeing you guys, bro. Israel Williams. Haven't seen you in a while. Yeah, Welcome nice back. back. Love Andrew Israel Williams. All right. I think that under four is, uh, is very nice. I, I don't mind that juice. Mm -hmm. I mean, are they going to put up five runs against these two pitchers? Possibly. Possibly. And Neil Frank says Flaherty and a better team at plus 160. Hard to pass up. Yes, that's true. At the same time, uh, public dogs are a losing proposition. All right. Oh, Israel Williams says make sure to come to my restaurant when in Birmingham, guys. We are Absolutely. definitely write this shit down, Jim, for the love of God. Copy and Michael's, paste it. Michael's Restaurant in Birmingham. Yeah, he's told us Birmingham. about that spot too before. Oh my uh, God, would I love to go there. Oh, just, nice. to, just to soak up the love. Yeah. And I'm sure the food is killer too. Shout out to Israel Williams. All right, let's move on. I think that first five uh, under four is a play. Mm -hmm. I really do. Uh, these offenses aren't pitching well. These pitchers are, 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 sorry, aren't hitting well. These pitchers are looking very good. Um, 
I like it. Uh, what's Ray Williams say? Anthony L. I like the first five under versus mm-hmm. elite pitchers are, are my go to. Uh, Native Queen says no score in the in the first. Mm-hmm. Um, hmm. Shout out to Hako Schofield. Shout out to Hako Schofield. All right, Jim. We want to keep okay. a brisk pace. I'm here. on it. I'm going to take that first five under four. Are, oh, you are. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Let's uh, let's line shop here. Under four, St. Louis, Washington. Wow. It is headed down. We're going to have to give you minus one thirty two. Is that okay? That's okay. All right, St. Louis, Washington. Wow. It is definitely headed down. No. Under four, minus one thirty two. It opened at minus one twelve. Now it's one thirty two, and most places are now at three and a half. Interesting. Under four minus one thirty two. You're no, taking it. Huh, I am. I am. And I'm also. Uh, I'm also going to have to make this bet at some mm-hmm. point. So mm-hmm. as soon as the, the next game is right. the last one uh, game at one thirty Eastern, yes. and then we can move on. And I'll make the bets as okay. we move on to the next. Okay. Uh, Philly and Miami. Urena against Velasquez. What Urena might be might get the award for currently the most hard to figure out starting pitcher in all of baseball. When he's on, he is capable of a shutout one run game. Most of the time, though, he gets hit. Velasquez also tends to get hit. Uh, I'm thinking that one of these guys gets hit, and probably the first five innings over is a good play here. It is just four at plus 100, but the total is getting bet down. It opened at the, the under was four plus 103. Now it's down to four plus, minus 114. Yeah, and the roof I am exp- is going to be closed, right, because of the thunderstorms, uh, I assume. I'm starting to feel better. I don't know whether it's the coffee, the love from the comment section, sitting next to you, Jimmy the Bag, analyzing sports games. I don't know what's nice. going on. It does feel nice. All of a sudden, I'm feeling better. Uh, it does feel nice. <laughs> Jim's like, okay. <laughs> no, I Let's like it. Let's not get like too it. crazy here. All uh, right, Jimmy the Bag, Urena and Velasquez, what to expect from these guys? I was assuming that one of these guys is going to get hit, maybe both of them. Uh, the first five innings is getting bet under, though. Yeah, and, and uh, it's Kobe says Miami playing well, Philadelphia bats uh, missing. Can you trust this offense without Hoskins on it? That's probably it? why the total is going to get that. Huge shout out to Kobe Valentine for giving us essential, essential lineup information. Kobe Valentine, thank you. So These much, are two Frank. horrifying looking lineups. Yes. Uh, yes. You know what? My, my plan was to come in here and take the over on this game. Right. Uh, Velasquez is a 5.87 ERA in his past four starts. Uh, Urena, 4.45 ERA at home. One and two with a 5.33 ERA in August. But these, uh, these lineups are just too uh, horrifying. Uh, I'm not going to make a move on it's this. It's that bad. Who's in the Philly lineup? Who's in the Philly lineup? Uh, the Philly lineup is ugly. Roman Quinn, who, who actually is you know, a pretty exciting youngster. Santana, Herrera, Ramos, Williams, Cabrera, Kingery, Velasquez at the eighth spot, and Hernandez turning it over on the ninth spot. Miami, Ortega, Anderson, Real Muto, then Castro, Dietrich, Rojas, Brinson, Dean, and Urena. I can't trust those offenses. That's why the move's going to the under. Yeah. What do you think about the what do you think about betting on the Philly first five team total over anyway? Because if your rain is off, like I said, it doesn't matter who's in the lineup. If your rain is off, he'll get hit. No doubt about it. Uh, he, he's a, he's a he's got a strange strange uh, you know emotions all over the place. Char- strange character guy. Kind of sounds like me a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> little bit. Less arm hair. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah. You know what? Uh, Urena, Urena uh, can't be trusted. Mm-hmm. But I do think that, uh, I, you know. I, you I think could, it's a good spot for him? No, I can't. I mean, I, I like the lineup he's facing. Right. But no, I, I just can't trust this guy. He came out to pitch after, after beating Acuna. That made sense to me. That's the kind of thing he does. Shows right. everybody why he's the ace but can't do it two games in a row. Right. Uh, Tomer says left, left Philly's lineup looks fine to me. Lots of mm-hmm. lefty bats with right-handed pitching. Herrera is solid against right-handed pitchers. Yeah, yeah. R two D two's on the Philly run line. Sean Thompson leans Philly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm. I'm, uh, I'm gonna stay off. This All right, one. I'm not staying off it. I'm gonna take Philly first five team total over two. One minus one oh three. That's the current line at uh, at uh, at Pinnacle. Uh, first F- five. Finney two point says finally get to watch you guys live because of the holiday. I hate how work always gets in the way. Hell give, yeah, give Finney some love. Man. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Shout out to Finney. Shout out to Finney. And if it weren't for those uh, scumbags elites, we'd have uh, we'd only have to work three or four days a week. And maybe that'll come to fruition one of these days. I'm taking Philly. Uh, I just updated and now it's minus one oh five. So I'm going to take that one. Uh, Philly first half team total over two minus one oh five. I'll take a shot. If Urena comes in and has a good start, which is entirely possible, you know, it, it, it'll be a loser, but that's OK. And then uh, the lineup for Miami isn't looking too inspiring, but the first five team total is one and a half. Jesus. Is Velasquez a one and a half starting He's pitcher? Certainly not. It's certainly not. Right. Right. I mean, maybe. But I doubt it, right? Unless that's just a, 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 a us being squares again here. Yeah, there's no way. All right, okay. Let's uh, let's move on. How about that, let's Jim? Let's do it. All right, now the 130 game. Cincinnati against Pittsburgh. Harvey against Williams. Williams, is it smoke and mirrors or is it for real? 
Is it smoke and mirrors or is it for real? There's been a 15 cent line move in favor of Cincinnati. I was leaning Cincinnati here. I will admit that, I, and this is a bet that I probably should have made, but I did bet Pittsburgh first five team total under two and a half since I saw two and a half. Is Harvey going to be good here? What do you think? His last start, he got hit, but his peripherals were fine. You know, he, was, he had a bad first inning and then he fell apart late, but he got his strikeouts. He didn't give up any walks. This is the Pittsburgh lineup. What do we think here? Twate Latte, he's in the house. What can you tell us about this game? I'd love to hear what Twate Latte has to say. Mm -hmm. Shout out to Israel Williams. Says this freaking show needs more sponsors, national broadcasting, and raises for Pete and Jimmy. ESPN, what up? Who said that? Israel Williams. All right, we're going. We're going to fucking Birmingham. We're, we're going, going to, to Birmingham. We're going to, take, we're we're going gonna, to Birmingham. Yeah, we're going to go in. We never take. We don't take our vacation days here. You know what I'm saying, Jim? We're going to go in very soon. We're going to take some fucking vacation days. We're going to go right down to Birmingham. We're going to eat and we're going to chill out in the fucking restaurant of Israel Williams. That's the comment of the day. That's. I don't even know. I don't know how anyone can make a better comment than that. <laughs> Um, Shout out to Israel Williams. No doubt. No doubt. Gabriel Rodriguez likes the over here. The rest. I can't trust Harvey. Uh, Twadi Latte says uh, Williams Saber metrics are terrible. Game time time 88 Fahrenheit. Wind blowing out to left center six miles per hour. Reds have played 13 straight division games, four and nine, but won the last two. Mm -hmm. Pittsburgh looked ugly on that road trip, three and six against uh, the Brewers, Cards, and Braves. Harvey, six and seven, four point nine seven ERA, 1.33 whip. Mm -hmm. He has nice records in his uh, last four starts against uh, Milwaukee, 3.18 ERA. Uh, eight career starts against Pittsburgh. He's two and six with a 6.12 ERA. Um, why do I have... Oh, Wednesday against Milwaukee. Sorry. Wednesday against Milwaukee. Uh, sorry. Harvey, one and oh, 3.18 ERA in his past four starts. Wednesday against Milwaukee, he did not look good. He struck out mm -hmm. six, walked none in four innings, but only lasted four innings. He had five runs and 11 hits. Eight career starts against Pittsburgh. He's been touched by them, 6.12 ERA. I mean, you know, say what you want about sabermetrics, and I, obviously they're very, very important. Uh, but over his past eight starts, Williams, four and two with a 0 0.84 ERA. Yeah. Allowed four runs. Here you go, though. Anthony L., Williams is smoking mirrors. Latte, latte. Williams sabermetrics are terrible. Shaquille Bell, though, don't like to be going against Shaquille Bell. Likes pit money line. Kobe Valentine, give me Harvey today. All right, everyone's going back and forth, back and forth on this one. Gabriel Rodriguez, the king. The, not just a king, the king. Gabriel Rodriguez likes Pittsburgh over. I was thinking that Cincinnati minus one might be worth a shot. Uh, Williams is, uh, yeah, I'm not sure what's up with Williams, but if I was going to take this one, either which way, I would definitely take uh, take a big underdog line. And, uh, you know, I think there's, 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 there's high variance for both Williams and Harvey here. And uh, Cincinnati minus one at plus, the one and a half is plus 230. Very, very tempting, Jim. Cincinnati has some bats, don't they? They do. Uh, this lineup's not that great. Hamilton, Votto, Jeanette, Suarez, Shebler. So nice one through five. And mm -hmm. Tucker Barnhart's hitting right now. It's a nice one through six. But then Irvin, Trahan, and then Harvey. Pittsburgh is not hitting. Marte, Frazier, Polanco, Cervelli, Dickerson, Bell, Moran, Newman at mm -hmm. shortstop. And then Williams. Yeah. When I, when I think about the people watching this show and the nice things they say, I just want to I just, I just give them the best fucking show I can possibly give them with everything. Winning right. picks, analysis, jokes, life advice, love, everything, Jim. You know, I love that. I love that. <laughs> Once again, Jim's like, okay. All right, Cincinnati, Pittsburgh. I'm thinking about Cincinnati minus one. I'm thinking about, I am thinking about Pittsburgh first five innings, team total under. People are saying, some people are saying this is a fade Harvey kind of day. Tomar says there's certain pitchers like Lester and Williams who seem to pitch better than their metric. Yes, and every and there are pitchers like that in football, in college football. There are also coaches who get more wins than their advanced stats would uh, would indicate. The guy from Navy is like that, and uh, the guy from his name is, is slipping my mind. But the guy from Kansas State is like who's the fucking coach of Kansas State? The hell is that guy's name? The coach of Kansas State. I don't have it. Uh, and the coach of Navy. On me. Uh, There's a few guys who are like that. Yes. Uh, advanced analytics are very, very predictive most of the time. But anyone who, who looks into that stuff uh, a lot knows that there, there do seem to be uh, outliers, both positively and negatively, right? Uh, and it's always interesting when that's the case. It does, that does seem to be the case. And, uh, and it, it works not just with pitchers in, in baseball, but with coaches in college football, everything. You know what I'm saying, Jim? Yeah, no, there's no doubt about it. And, and we, we've been dealing with pitchers like that lately. Mm -hmm. uh, and Gant being one of them, Williams being one of them. Uh, yeah, Bill of Snyder, Bill Snyder, right, has, has had years and years and years of, of, of getting more wins than he should be getting. And uh, the advanced analytics people say that there's something to that. They say there's not, that there's probably so, something fundamental to that. Yes, and Numatola also from, from Navy is the same way, the same way. 
and their coaches on the other side as well. All right, Jim, let's uh, let's uh, let, let, let's let's move on. What do we have here? Williams, fifty-five percent hard hit rate last three games. Wow. Yeah. Uh, you know. Um... R two D two Finland says, "I'm with you, Pete. Take Cincy. Pittsburgh can't hit for shit." Justin Searcy, I like Cincy and minus one is a good play. Jay Rose says, Pirates today, Reds suck on the road. Lamont Williams, Pittsburgh playing bad right now. Anthony L, Reds minus one. But we know that Anthony L is just looking at those sabermetrics and saying, this guy is smoking mirrors, which may, he probably is. But he's been doing it pretty repeatedly. Yeah, I, you know, I was leaning towards the Pirates, but I'm going to stay off of it because of uh, <laughs> everybody saying this. Mm -hmm. um, all right, let's let's uh, let's yeah. make some decisions okay, here. Okay, I'm gonna stay off of it. Okay, I don't want to. But uh, Anthony else says if you have a 255 B A B I P yeah. and they're getting hit hard like Williams, you won't outpitch your metrics forever. Dynasty one would says think, public on one would today. think, one would think, and yet the the the, the money is moving in uh, in uh, in Cincinnati's favor. There has been a line move in Cincinnati. All right, you know what I'm gonna do, Jim? I am gonna take Cincinnati minus one. I'm gonna take a shot with Cincinnati minus one. Why don't we uh, move on to the two o'clock games while I uh, while I line chop here for Cincinnati minus one? Blood Brother Fitness saying Jimmy White Sox today. You know, I, I just feel like I listened to an interview of Fulmer and he doesn't. He sounds like nothing's wrong with him. Mm -hmm. He sounds like he's still got his velocity. He's feeling good. All right, and let, last let, sorry, let me go the line. The Cincinnati sure. money line plus one twenty eight. Alternative run line at bet three sixty five is plus two thirty. I'm taking Cincinnati minus one, and I'd be leaning Pittsburgh first five team total under two and a half as well. Uh, let's move on. Yes, let's move on. I don't on know to how much time we should really spend on the Tigers White Sox. There's a couple of these games where there's thunderstorms throughout the mm -hmm. day. This is one of them. Uh, so I don't think we should spend too much time on it. But Tigers have won seven of ten, eighteen of thirty. Tigers have lost 7 of 9, but coming off uh, not a bad series against the Yankees and coming off 11-7 win against them. Fulmer 0-5 with a 5.90 ERA in his past 7 starts, but he continues to say he's good. And he's the kind of guy that I just, I, I don't want to fade him. Uh, I, I know that he can, I know he's terrible in the third time through a lineup, but I've watched him dominate weak lineups. Mm -hmm. Lopez 5-9, and 4.51 ERA, 1.36 week, coming off the best perform one of his best performances of his career, limiting the Yanks to one run, five hits over seven innings, 3.58 ERA, six career starts against the Tigers. Tigers don't hit righties well, but they've been hitting him better lately. Uh, and White Sox don't hit righties well, but much better than the Tigers. Uh, this is tricky. I don't think, yeah, I don't think we should spend too much time on it. I think this game will, uh, but a lot of people liking the over, Red Girl liking the strikeout over. I'd be very careful with the strikeout over with Lopez in case they do start the game and the um, thunderstorms roll in. You could get screwed there. Uh, Chris Blanchard says Sox roll. I, I say we just keep uh, moving. All right, well, let's talk about maybe the most interesting game on the card, Cubs-Milwaukee, right? Uh, Davies returns for Milwaukee. Uh, was, 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 was dominating single-A batters. Take that with a grain of salt. And, uh, and uh, Cole Hamels has been dominating major league batters. Unreal. I did not see this coming from Hamels. I was thinking about fading Hamels uh, at the beginning of this year. And uh, while he was with Texas, it was, uh, it was a, a reasonably uh, profitable thing to do. Uh, uh, but he has been absolutely lights out against the Cubs. I was thinking about taking the, uh, the Cubs here. I was thinking about maybe betting on, uh, on, on a fade of Davies here. Although, 15-cent line move in favor of Milwaukee. So someone knows something or someone thinks they know something or something like that, Jim. Yeah, roof is going to be closed through the thunderstorms. Brewers won four straight series. Cubs won 12-17. Both teams playing well. Hamels has been lights out in the Cubs Uni. Uh, 4-0, 0.69 ERA, 1.00 whip. Uh, 4.72 ERA and 20 starts before that. Now he's just pitching extremely good. He's also got an extra day of rest. Mm -hmm. 14 career starts against these um, Brew Crew. Uh, Hamels 7-3, 3.64 ERA. Davies, well, you know, comes off the disabled list. Who carried you through a complete game shutout against Class A or for Class A Wisconsin? Who sure. cares? Uh, 3.64 ERA and 12 career starts. Uh, you know what? Uh, Cub, uh, Andrew says Cubs seems like a trap game. It uh, does. Minus 135 down to minus 115. Ski Profit says I'm on the Cubs. You know what? I, uh, and Anthony else says, as a fan, I love the Cubs. As a gambler, I'm passing. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't, I, I, the Brewers' offense is so strong. Um, although they don't hit lefties as well, but that's changed since they, uh, all the added bats that they've they brought in. But in saying all this, I still think Cubs early. Mm -hmm. I still like Cubs first five, and I'm going to take it. I'm going to jump on Cubs first five. Yeah, I took the Cubs on the first five team total over, and at just two, I think I have to take a shot with that. It's uh, right now two minus 135 at Pinnacle, and at, uh, at uh, Heritage, where are we? Cubs, uh, Cubs, Cubs, Chris Cubs. Brand, yeah. Chris Blanchard says Brew, Brew Crew Hamel, or hits Hamels hard today. Mm -hmm. That might happen. 
I'm, in, I'm taking the Cubs first five innings team total over two minus 135. First five innings team total over two minus 135. The Milwaukee first five team total is just two. The, 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 the both teams first uh, over is just four and a half. That's definitely tempting. I'm going to take Cubs first five money line, but before we do, Brent Hunt says, Pete, since it's Labor's, uh, Labor Day and lots of people are off work mm-hmm. and going uh, to be watching these games, will be, there be any correlation to the totals of these games? Meaning, uh, Meaning he thinks that more people are going to be betting them? Yeah, more in, public in, in, money. In the sense that, uh, uh, I, I mean, my, 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 my assumption is that in baseball, uh, they can, I mean, it's definitely the it's definitely the case that uh, that that stuff matters when it comes to football and even soccer. My assumption is that with baseball, it's not quite like that. There's people who bet baseball every day, regardless of the schedule, and then uh, and but you might be right. I, my my honest answer is I don't know. I'm not exactly sure. I'll be interested to know though if there is a, a markedly different uh, uh, handle on on Labor Day than on uh, than than on other days. I'm sure there is on the weekends. That's for sure. Uh, but yeah, that's a great question, Brant Hunt. I could probably get an answer for you very quickly. But offhand, I don't know. I'm assuming it's, it's a little bit different, you know, but not, not noticeably different. But it could be a massive difference. It could be. That's a good question. Not exactly sure. All right, Jimmy, the bag. First you, five money line. Cubs. First five money line on the Cubs. All right, hold on one second. Hold on. That's a great question, and I apologize for not knowing it. Let me see. And I could give a better, a better educated guess if I, uh, if I could deep, dig deeper into my memory, which I can't right now because I'm still a little bit mushy in my brain. All right, so let's see. What are you taking? Cubs, first five innings, right? Yeah. All right, it's all over the place. Bookmaker, 135. Heritage, 130. Bet online, 125. And we'll check a Pinnacle to see if we can give you a slightly better line here at uh, Pinnacle. But right now, we're looking at minus 125. No. All right, so we'll give you a Cubs, first five innings, minus 125, right? Beautiful. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'm thinking that maybe this is the spot where Hamels, uh, Hamels has a dud. What do you think? I can understand it. I mean, but uh, Kobe was. Let's just take a look at this line. Kobe was saying the Brewers are missing some bats here. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see: Kane, Yelich, Aguilar, Braun, Perez, Scope, Kratz, Arcia. You know what? Uh, I I feel yeah. Chris Bryant back in the lineup too in the mm-hmm. fourth spot. Uh, Daniel Murphy leading off. Murphy, Baez, Rizzo, Bryant, Schwarber, Russell, Caratini, Hamels at eight. Hap turning the lineup over. I'm very comfortable. Yeah, it's possible. There's no doubt. It's possible. But I'm going to jump on this uh, Cubs first five here comfortably. All right, I'm thinking about it. Blake Kersey says, Pete, you're cracking me up today. Thank you so much, Blake Kersey. Oh, Jesus Christ, Jimmy the Bag. All right, let's, uh, let's, uh, let's move on. There's other plays that I might give, of course. We can't, we can't have uh, 6 o'clock uh, plays on all these uh, day games. So let's see. Minnesota-Houston, I don't know, man. That's going to be a pass for me. Keuchel against Gibson. I'd have to say that Minnesota has the value here, but, ton just, of value. but there's no way I'm going to bet them. But what do you think, Jim? You know, they have so much value here. I mean, Altuve's out of the lineup, but he's not been playing well. I can understand, you know, why you'd want to give him a break here. But, God, I was thinking Twins reverse run line here. Uh, it just, just going for a big score. Let's see what mm-hmm. we get on it. Uh, let me quickly look what we get on I just, I mean, uh, Keichel, he, he just doesn't look, he certainly doesn't look like the Cy Young pitcher of old. And you get plus 450 mm-hmm. on the Twins at minus yeah. one and a half. That's just gorgeous. Yeah. Uh, Anthony L. Twins first five plus 215. Wow. Yellow Jesus says Davies is a bum. like that. Uh, Taco Schofield, though, is on the Astros run line. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, roof will be closed because of thunderstorms. Twins have lost seven of nine. Gibson surrendered at least three earned runs in five of his last six starts. 5.14 ERA over that stretch has not looked good. Three and one with a 3.74 ERA and six career starts against the Astros. Keuchel, two and three with a 4.50 ERA and five career starts against the Twins. He got touched. Shortest outing of the season, uh, April 10th at Target Field. Uh, Twins, 242 with no power, 680 OPS versus lefties. And Astros don't hit righties like they do lefties. And also Astros don't hit at home like they do on the road. Uh, you know, I, 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 uh, Kobe Valentine says, no Altuve, I would pass on Houston bets. Yeah, I, I would like that plus four, what did I say, plus 450 yeah. on the reverse run line. Mm, Pick very up tempting. Four and a half units. Very tempting. It is very tempting. I mean, this Twins lineup can hit. Oh, can they? Who's in the lineup? Is it announced? Uh, yes, it is. Mauer, Forsyth, Polanco, Garver, Grossman, Sano, Cave, Austin, and Johnny Field. Going up against Springer, Kemp, Bregman, Correa, Gonzalez, Guriel, McCann, Gaddis, Reddick. Mm. You know, um, I, like that, uh, I like that first five. I like that first five that he's on. Mm-hmm. Um, Twins getting plus 215 on first five with their best pitcher in a good situational spot, says Anthony Gibson's, Gibson's been getting hit, though, recently. He's been getting hit, yeah. Yeah. How uh, about yeah. the first five over? Keichel and Gibson. How's Keichel going to do here, Jim? 
Well, you know, the twins just don't hit lefties with any sort of power whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, Seriously says Austro or Astros win big late, but that first five from Anthony is a sharp play. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, I was thinking about a shot with Minnesota on the second half. Just not sure. Maybe I'll think about this one a little bit later and, uh, and add, uh, add uh, uh, hmm. Rosario being out. Does that matter yes. for Minnesota? He's been their best hitter this year. Yeah. Yes, it matters. Hmm. <laughs> Oh, wow. Sean Thomas has got a nice future on Cubs to win the division, plus 375. Wow, you must have got that at the perfect time. I mm -hmm. jumped on the Cubs to win the division thanks to Tomarina Tomor, but mm -hmm. I still got like minus 130 or something on it. Um, yeah, I, 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 love, I would love to jump on the Twins here. I just, you know, it takes a lot of balls. Gibson isn't pitching well. I'm not going to make a move yet, but I'm going to think about it. But we got to yeah. keep rolling, man. We yeah. got too many let's games. Let's keep rolling. Let's keep rolling. Okay. All right. Uh, let's talk about, uh, let's see. Let's go to some other this day Giants games. Giants Rockies game has been strange yes, to me. Line, yes. uh, at least this morning, very early, a big line move in the Rockies' favor. Game time temp, 77 Fahrenheit, wind blowing out, but sideways and, and softly. Rockies 8 and 5 against the Giants this year, 5 and 1 at Coors Field. I know the Giants have no offense, but Mad Bum is pitching. Giants have scored three or fewer runs in six of their past nine games. Bumgarner just threw seven shutout innings Tuesday against Atlanta. He seems to be in midseason. Form, allowed two or fewer earned runs in six of his past seven starts, 2.93 career ERA against the Rockies, and uh, 1.38 ERA in two starts this year. 3.93 ERA in 14 starts at Coors Field. Anderson's looked awful lately. Yeah. I mean, two-thirds of an inning against St. Louis. Now he's been given seven days rest. Will that do the difference? He's 0-4 with 11.39 ERA in five August starts, 4.11 ERA in five career starts against the Giants. I know the Giants lineup is weak with no power at all against lefties. And the Rockies hit lefties hard, but man, I just feel like this is a, too good to be true with San Francisco. Yeah, big line move favoring Colorado, which makes me nervous. I was thinking about a shot with San Francisco, first five team total over. Again, just uh, betting against a, 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 a pitcher who's wearing down no matter who's in the lineup, no matter what their stats are against lefties or whatever. Uh, but, you know, obviously a big line move in favor of Colorado. Why? Is seven days rest? Mm -hmm. Is that why? Like why? Anderson's looked awful. awful he has. But, but the extra rest, do you think, is a, enough for the Sharpies to jump all over it? Could be. I mean, someone thinks they know something. You know, maybe the line will come back down the other way. Maybe the line move will be wrong, but you have to respect the line move, Jim. Yeah, and I hate it. Um, Chris Blanchard says mad bum bad on the road. Mm -hmm. uh, hmm. uh, Vincent K. Mackwell says the total's gone under in five of San Francisco's last six games while playing Colorado. Lamont Williams on San Francisco money line. Brooke Jordan on the Giants run line. Anthony L. says Giants got awful lineup, but mad bum is looking good at like under 10. Hmm. Yeah, I was actually thinking about a shot with the over. I'm not a believer in Anderson here despite the extra rest, and I think uh, Bumgarner is, uh, is uh, maybe due for some regression uh, upcoming, and uh, why not here at, uh, at Coors? But Coors is very tricky. Also was thinking about taking, once again, a shot with uh, San Francisco, minus one. You know, I know that San Francisco can't hit for shit, but, you know, if this turns into a shootout and the lineups, uh, you know, all of a sudden are, are performing differently, Ooh, go ahead. Not, what, what? My man Nutflush says, Mad Bum goes yard today. You know, uh, nice to have his bat in the lineup in this situation. Sure, absolutely. Absolutely. All right, we can think about this one a little bit more, but we're, I can't believe how, how long we're, uh, how, how much uh, time we've, uh, we've eaten up here, Jim. Let's talk about the Yankees in Oakland. Sabathia against, uh, against Cahill, uh, uh, about a 10 cent line move in favor of, uh, of Oakland. Uh, you know, the Yankees are, are, uh, are a little bit, a uh, little bit iffy right now. You know what I'm saying? No question. Yeah. And uh, Oakland is, uh, is, 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 is pretty, pretty solid right now. Uh, I've been betting on Oakland minus ones recently at home in their recent uh, homestand and for the most part been doing well with that. Why not do it here again? What do you think? Cahill, uh, stark, stark home road splits. Yeah. Uh, you know, what, do we, what to expect here, Jim? Yeah, the wind's blowing out to right field. It gets stronger as the game goes on to double digits. And, uh, but, you know, it's a swirling wind. The Yankees just completed an ugly 3-4 and four homestand. Sabathia doesn't have good numbers against the A's. Cahill has allowed eight earned runs since last eight and a third. But as we said, that was on the road. Mm -hmm. Yankees hitting righties hard. And A's hit lefties pretty hard. Uh, but, and Neil Frank says A's batting 224 versus lefties at home. 248, 747 OPS overall. We talked on Friday how huge the difference is between their home runs on the road compared to at home. Um, man, I, uh, Sean Thompson says, give me that plus 110 on the Yanks. I feel, like, um, I, I feel like we should take the A's here. Mm -hmm. I really do. Uh, Tomor says Kale's been much better at home. Not a good park for the Yankees. They rely on power. Yankees bullpen hasn't been good recently either. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Tomor says Oakland has a big uh, bullpen advantage. 
R2D2 says Yanks A's under nine and a half. Trust me. Alex Letson mm. says love the A's today. So do I. Give me the A's. You want that? Yeah. What? Money line or money run line? Or what? Full game. Money line. All right. The line has gotten bet up a little bit. We can give you the line at the Greek at minus 122. So Jim's going to take Oakland. Money line minus 122. And R2D2 says, uh, says, uh, says take the under. Trust him. Take the under. Trust him. Uh, not nine and a half. It's eight and a half. David H. says Yanks have Oakland's number. This is a different Oakland team. Mm -hmm. uh, things have changed. Superior Sports says shout out to the A's lock of the day. I like hearing that. Mm. Um, uh, Anil Frank says anytime you're getting the Yankees as an underdog, it's worth a look. I get it. I get it. But I just I feel like um, that Cahill can be comfortable. Brent Hunt says great call. That makes me feel good. I'm about to make a call that maybe people don't think is great. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's very square. Mm -hmm. I don't care. I'm making it now. I want Giants first five and Giants full game. Okay, Giants first five and Giants full game. Full game, of course, the line has moved 25 cents uh, in uh, Colorado's favor. So at the very, no, no, I think that the people who who, who who are sticklers for squareness would say, hey, at the lead, at the, uh, taking it at plus 104 would have been square as hell. Taking it now, maybe not. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you're getting the best of the number, likely. And we will give you the line at Intertops plus 130 on the full game. Jim's going to take San Francisco money line plus 130. Thank you very much. Intertops for offering us the best line at at uh, at uh, at uh, on the Giants. Go and, ahead. And now we have both links uh, under our YouTube page. So now we have for new uh, new accounts, mm -hmm. uh, you can hit that link. But we also have the reload bonus uh, below that. So uh, hammer that and and uh, take it to the bank and, and get for the, the bonus. first five innings. We can give you the pinnacle line, which is plus one sixteen, plus one sixteen. San Francisco money line plus one thirty. First half is going to be uh, plus one sixteen. Interesting, Jim. All right, we got to keep a brisk face. Yes. Casey Cleveland. Uh, Casey suddenly hitting. Right? Yep. This guy, Plutko, do you trust him? I don't know. I watched I, his last start, and it was, was much it? better than I expected it really? to be. Really? Yeah. Because I was thinking that KC, if not minus one, at least on the first five team total over, or maybe the full game team total over, might be worth a shot. What do you think? I, I find this a tricky game. Mm -hmm. uh, 84 Fahrenheit, wind blowing sideways. Ray, Royals have won five straight. Junis coming off that first complete game. Uh, last start against Cleveland, he got touched you know violently two starts against the indians this year he's 0-2 with a 9.82 era career 8.05 era plucko pitched five and a third gave up two runs five hits five strikeouts two walks on august 29th hasn't won a game since june 24th ranger or sorry royals are starting to hit and the indians just mm -hmm. continue to hit mm -hmm. uh you know I, uh, dom ricci also took oakland money line nice to hear that nice to run with dom uh i i'm uncomfortable with this game i i find it tricky i find it tricky to see how junis will pitch mm -hmm. after that beautiful start and uh, I think that Plutko, also when you're getting this, this Indians as such a huge favorite, uh, Justin Searcy says Royals have value, but I don't want to bet them. I mm -hmm. get that. Anthony L says Indians run line or pass. Both those, both those comments make a ton of sense to me, mm -hmm. and I'm just going to pass. Mm -hmm. uh, Jay Rose says Indians here, don't overthink it. Royals suck on the road, no value here. Well, then you're going to have to take the, the Indians on, on the run line, aren't you? I mean, who's going to want to lay? What, what do you have to lay with Cleveland right now? Yeah, uh, like minus 170. Well, it's gone down. So money's coming on Kansas City. Yeah. Minus 185, minus 190. I mean, it's not, it's not terrible, but I'm not going to do it. Mm -hmm. And uh, Twadi Latte coming in. Pirates have gone under 16. Or, or Sorry, have gone under in 16 of their last 20 games. Mm -hmm. Interesting. All uh, right, why don't you take another game, Jim, while I decide what I want to do here with the KC game? Sure. I mean, the Rays-Blue Jays game, have they announced who's starting for the Rays? Have we got yes, a line Stanek. yet? Yeah, Oh, it's Stanek, who's been very good mm -hmm. at times. Uh, game time, 80 Fahrenheit, wind blowing in. Uh, Jays coming off that 2-4 and four road trip versus the Orioles and the Marlins. They're just a bad baseball team. Uh, Strowan making his first start since going on the DL with the, with the blister injury. You know, he often pitches well with rest, and, uh, but I just will not fade the Rays. It makes no sense. Uh, Rays are hitting 258, 725 OPS versus righties. They're getting nothing from Bowers, and, and Cash says he's going to keep Bowers in the lineup. I believe he's four for his last 58. Jays are hitting 232 with a 706 OPS. Uh, you know, I just, um, it's a tough, tough spot. There's some tough spots here. The Angels, Rangers, Shoemaker versus Springs. What are you going to get from Shoemaker? There's thunderstorms in the forecast all day, so we probably mm -hmm. shouldn't even bother. Uh, huge thunderstorms in the, uh, in the forecast. I, I bet you this game doesn't even go off. John Thompson says Junis has been fired lately. Um, All right, this might be a mistake, but I'm taking the Kansas City Royals team total over three and a half minus 138 at Pinnacle. Team total over three and a half minus 138 at Pinnacle. Yes, it's true they've been hitting at home, and now when they go on the road, they might just uh, relax. But I'm gonna this is a low total, and uh, I'm gonna take a shot with it. KC Royals team total over three and a half minus 138 might be a mistake. Also leaning first five innings team total over two, but I'm gonna just make that that one play on that game. All right, Jim, let's keep it brisk pace. Sure. We want to talk about CF. Bell, right well we do uh definitely the wheeler uh, stratton start uh i believe it was on friday the the under the first five 
uh, under four, I believe mm-hmm. I got it. It was just, just felt like um, too easy. And, and I've had very few of those feelings this year in MLB. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I just feel the same way with this DeGrom mm-hmm. Wood start. Wood starting to throw well, coming off seven innings of shut up ball. We know this Mets team can't hit lefties. And DeGrom has the right stuff to shut down this Dodgers lineup for a certain amount of time. Mm-hmm. The Dodgers offense is very clutch but they just don't seem to be putting up big numbers at all. And uh, 19 consecutive quality starts, 24 consecutive starts at three and runs or less for DeGrom. I'm going to take the first five under in L.A. right now. Mm-hmm. Okay, the first five under in the, uh, in the Mets and, uh, and L.A. game. Let's mm-hmm. see. Let's see what the, uh, what the line is here. It is going to be three and a half minus 109 at Pinnacle. You want that one? Yeah. Okay, Mets and L.A. Dodgers, uh, first five under Three and a half minus one oh nine. Uh, Degrom is, is is running up some high pitch counts. Are we worried that uh, that maybe he might be wearing down, and maybe this is a game where he starts to wear down a little bit? I just don't feel like this Dodgers offense has their shit together. I mean, we know they hit righties hard. Mm-hmm. They know that we know they hit righties hard, but but this Mets team, I mean, they can't hit lefties. I just feel like uh, that Degrom likes these showcase spots, mm-hmm. and this is a giant showcase spot. Is he going to go nine? No, uh, but I I feel like the first five under is something I can trust. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Kobe Valentine says, I hate backing a pitcher off a long DL stint. LA Angels, uh, probably not a good uh, play. I don't think play. that game's even going to go off. Mm-hmm. Uh, huge thunderstorms in the forecast all day. Uh, I don't think we should take too much time capping it yeah, right now. Yeah, because that's that's an evening game. We'll know about that. And then the Baltimore-Seattle game, I was thinking about under or uh, or a second half under here as well. This guy, Rodgers, is uh, not bad, right? Well, at least in his minor league results, it was not bad. As in the majors, you know, it, well, it remains to be seen. He's okay as... Combined with Scranton and uh, Norfolk, mm-hmm. uh, an 8-9, 3.54 ERA through 109 and two-thirds, 101 Ks, 39 walks. I mean, it's okay. Yeah. I mean, it's good. Yeah. It's good, but it's not great. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ramirez has looked uh, bad, but remember, uh, he looked terrible in the beginning of the year. He actually looks a little bit better. Um, yeah. Uh, people talking about CFL, I'm looking forward to get to that. Mr. Gokster liking that. Under five, he's got no score in the first in that game, that, uh, that Dodgers-Mets game. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you make of, of uh, Erasmo Ramirez? Is he going to start pitching a little better? You know, he's, he's one, we know what he's, he's a very known quantity, you know what I mean? And, uh, and uh, yeah, I think he probably has a, you know, five-inning, two-run start here. You know, but I'm going to take the second half under in Baltimore, Seattle, three and a half minus 125. That's another pick for me. Baltimore, Seattle, second half under three and a half minus 125. Let me review all the picks that we've given in MLB. Jim is on St. Louis, Washington, first half under four. Cubs, first half money line minus 125, right? San Francisco, first half money line plus 116. San Francisco, full game money line plus 130. Oakland, money line minus 122. And Mets, Dodgers, first half under three and a half minus 109. The picks I've given so far Cubs, first half team total over two. Boston, second half minus 125. Cincinnati, minus one at a big dog line. KC, team total over three and a half minus 138. Boston, Atlanta, first half under five and full game under nine. Baltimore, Seattle, second half under three and a half minus 125. And Philly, first half, team total over two minus 105. Those are all the picks that we've given so far. A whole lot of leans as well that I was thinking about, but I guess that is, uh, I guess that's going to be it, Jim. I could stack, I could, you know, stack a bunch of plays here, but uh, there's a lot of borderline plays for me here. Yeah, what do you think of uh, this Arizona... San Diego at Arizona. I mean, can we, can you do you think Mitchell is capable of having an okay start? No, I mean he looks awful. I was thinking about taking Arizona first five team total over, and exactly. then maybe San Diego on the second half at uh, plus one thirty. What would we get first five team total? You know, over? it's a three. It's a three, which that, is that uh, makes sense to me. I know yeah. this Arizona team is not hitting. Coming off a two and five road trip that's gotten saw them score just twelve runs. They've scored more than three runs once yeah. in the last ten games. San Diego's won four six on this past homestand. Mitchell though, he doesn't just have it. I don't think he off. has. It. Yeah, he's just a terrible pitcher. Yeah, you know, I don't think he has it. Uh, all right, I will. Uh, I'll throw that one on there. I'll throw that one on there, even though I was going to wait till the late show to do that one. Arizona first five innings, team total over three plus one hundred two. That's just a bet on uh, on Mitchall just not having it here. Okay, he, I'll take that first five team that total over all three. All right, Arizona first five innings, team total over. Three plus 102. I mean, we're basically going to need Mitchell to get, you know, give up four in the first inning before he gets up hold. But, uh, you know, we'll see. Arizona should be hitting better than they have been recently, shouldn't they? They should be, yeah. How I mean, are their uh, bats? How are their bats in that well, lineup? Their bats are just quiet. I mean, some of the guys that they're counting on for offense, when you're counting on Descalso for offense, it just goes to show you that the, the lineup isn't mm-hmm. hitting. Um, their outfield doesn't hit. And Souza needs to start. He's showing a little bit. 
But it, the whole lineup is just Peralta and Goldie, and and you know those guys are streaky guys as well. They're, they're, uh, Anthony L says D backs Padres is a pass minus two sixty is way too high for Godley, but can't back Mitchell either. I mm -hmm. agree. Uh, Tomer says I'm on Arizona. Godley was great in his last start, and Arizona's hitting bad pitchers. Um, now, I mean, what would you have to do to get any value out of the Diamondbacks? I mean, uh, Tomer says Godley got hammered by San Diego in last start. That's true. Uh, he gave up six runs in five innings in a no decision, August 18th at San Diego. All right, Jim, we got to move on because we do have to get to CFL and we won't have the time to cover those in the evening game. Cool. So let's do this, Jimmy the Bag. Why don't you cover CFL while I look at the uh, MLB card and maybe throw on some uh, some some last second leans here? And uh, have you have you looked into these two CFL games? I have looked into these two CFL All games. All right, I would. I'll tell you what I would be thinking about. I'd be thinking about Edmonton, Calgary over 53 and maybe Toronto plus the points at nine. Go ahead. Take it away, Jim. You know, I, I think you just nailed it right mm -hmm. there. I, I'd also be thinking of the, um, the Eskies covering. So Labor Day, the, these are the biggest. This is the season. CFL season starts to us. Oh, and by Labor the way, Day. let's throw the CFL record up there. Let's throw the CFL record up there. Jimmy the Bag is coming off a loss, which dropped into 14 and 7. Very nice, Jimmy the Bag. 14 and 7 in CFL. The guy knows what he's talking about. Sorry. Take. just wanted to do that. Yeah, thank you. Uh, Take that, it away. That loss uh, was off, uh, really hurt me. I, uh, I I had the NFL show, uh, The Audible with Donnie, and uh, you know we broke down every single game in the NFL, and I spent all afternoon on that. I didn't have enough time to really focus on my afternoon action, and it showed in the show. It sucks. I went 4 and in the morning and then fucked it all up on the late show it was very very uh disappointing also i was upset uh you know because the alouettes I, I knew so many people on the alouettes also like al mack was on the alouettes um team total over and the red blacks team total under i mean these guys were just nailing the game and even kelly mcmillan who came in with that with that over he hammered the alouettes he he hammered the red blacks team total under i just i didn't have enough time and i just focused on one play this is because i wanted to add action on a friday night it was poor handicapping whatever uh eskimos at stamps eskies are off a disappointing 25 24 loss the main thing that happened in that game was they didn't score a point in the second half and uh you know in this game we have the best two quarterbacks in the cfl going at each other Dance, they're coming off a big 39-26 win over the Bombers at home. It's, it's basically, this. Stamps have a great defense, but they have this elite secondary, and the Eskos ha Eskies have this elite receiver-Riley quarterback combo. Uh, you know, the Calgary's defense is extremely good. 16.9 points allowed this season. They lead the league in opponent net yards. They have the best turnover ratio in the CFL. They, and this means the world to them. Like, this is, this is the biggest day. This is going to be sold out. Now, I've been to a Labor Day Classic, and I've been here uh, at McMahon Stadium, and it was one of the greatest days I've ever had. I, I had it was a Jeff Garcia day. My buddy, uh, I can't really get into his illicit uh, dealings, but we Coke. were given, uh, yeah, he was a big uh, drug dealer in Calgary. And, and, and uh, in Calgary, uh, I don't even want to talk about, who, uh, but uh, the drug testing used to be pretty lax back then. So a lot of the CFLers, like we had guys who were superstars, like Fred Perry, uh, offensive lineman, might have been the best player in the whole league. He would have been playing in the NFL, but he had drug issues or whatever. Anthony so, Calvillo? Uh, well, yeah, I, that's a, that's no, a trickier, not, that's a trickier situation. <laughs> but so we had uh, Jeff Garcia press pass. We, I, was, I was Linda Garcia all day. I role played. I had Linda Garcia's press pass. I was on the field, and it was uh, one of my favorite sports memories of, of my life. Speaking of all this uh, stuff, um, I, I think there's going to be offense in this game. There, there, it's going to be jam-packed. There's going to be 35,000 people there. It's just going to be exciting, extremely exciting. And uh, I agree. I think there's going to be offense. I also think Eskimos can cover. But at this point, I would probably rather just take the over, and, uh, and that's what I will do. I will take the over in uh, Edmonton, Calgary. I think there's going to be O. That's an official pick, huh? Yeah. Edmonton, Calgary. All right, well, we can give you, oh, it's, just, it's all over the place, 53 and a half, 53 or 52 and a half at, uh, at uh, Heritage. Let me see. All right, so we can give you, uh, we can give you a Edmonton, Calgary over. 52 and a half, and that will be, uh, let me see, what is that? That will be minus 112, over 52 and a half, minus 112. I'm going to throw that one on my official picks as well, Jim. Edmonton, Calgary, over 52 and a half, minus 112, and I'm also going to take the first half over on this one as well. Why would you not like the first half over, Jim? Any reason? The Stampeders have been blowing teams out in the second half. Mm -hmm. uh, they like rope-a-dope, uh, you know? Uh, and they, interestingly, the, the first half uh, total has gotten bet down, open to 26 and a half, now down to 26 minus 117 on the, uh, on the, uh, on the, on the, uh, at Pinnacle. These teams know each other very well. Moss and McManus know each other very well. Uh, I've noticed that Mac just seems to have tricks up his sleeve in the second half, and I don't want to, 
I don't need uh, to, to force a situation. I'd mm-hmm. rather let the whole game take care of itself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you don't necessarily think it's going to start out explosive? I don't necessarily. I, I really, these guys know each other so well. They're playing again next week. Mm-hmm. They're not going to open up the, uh, they're not going to start by showing the big bag of tricks. Mm-hmm. I don't believe. Mm-hmm. Now there's going to be so much excitement in the air, and, and sometimes that leads to big plays. Uh, like the Argonauts Hamilton Tiger Cats game, I would like to take the under, but I think there's going to be special teams magic. We've seen what Frankie Williams is doing um, as a returner for the Tiger Cats, he's averaging 10 yards of punt return. He's capable of big plays. And, there, you know, when you're at Tim Horton Stadium in, in Hamilton, which is just such an electric atmosphere and it's sold out and the Argos are in town. I mean, this is like, this is, this is why you watch sports, you know? So, you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. I'm going to take the first half. I'm going to take Edmonton, Calgary, first half over 26 plus 100. That's the current line of Pinnacle. I'm going to double up on it. All right, Jim, go ahead. I have seen this line increase. Uh, mm-hmm. Hamilton Tiger Cats becoming bigger, bigger favorites. And uh, I think that's a dangerous spot just because, like, for the Argonauts, we, they play at BMO Field, you know, where TFC plays, and, and they're getting nobody coming out to their games. Nobody cares. And then they get to go into Hamilton, a very, very, you know, 45 minutes away, and it's going to be sold out and absolutely nuts. Like, th- this is the game that they all get up for. Because of that, I, I think that there's going to be a lot of oh, David H. liking that Calgary over too. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, I, I just feel like um, I, I would like to take the under. If this was, if we could make a play on, on how many offensive touchdowns are going to be scored, I think that will be limited. But I think there's just going to be there, there's a possibility of big, big plays. Now, because I don't trust either of these offenses, uh, I'm not going to take the over. But I am going to take the Argos to cover. Argos had one two in a row and looked to be rounding in the form. Then they lose to the Alouettes and they get hammered in the press for it. Well, the Alouettes showed their possibly their true colors in that game against the Red Blacks. The, the, the Alouettes, does, the, the loss doesn't look so bad anymore. Now, we saw this Ticats D step up in a huge way in that second half, and, and that could happen again. I just feel like um, this can be a closer game. And, and now, is it still nine and a half? Are they still hanging nine and a half? I don't know, but I made the decision. I'm going to take a ballsy pick here. Uh, I'm also going to take the Cubs Milwaukee first five innings over with Hamels and Davies. First five innings over with Hamels and Davies. Yes, despite Hamels starting, I am going to take a shot with that four and a half minus 112. I'm taking that one. I'm already on the Cubs first five innings, team total over. And I'm going to take Cubs Milwaukee first five over. Four and a half minus 112. That's a little bit ballsy, but I'm going to take it. All right, keep on. Go ahead. Uh, there's no nine and a halfs anymore. Mm-hmm. And uh, even Heritage has gone down to eight and a half. So that makes sense to me. I just think this is a game that's going to be close. I believe the Ticats will take it out, but um, I think this is a game that's going to be close. Mazzoli is, uh, is an excellent quarterback, but w- when you're dealing with Tressman, uh, you're dealing with Pop, these guys are maybe the best coaches in the league. And uh, I just, I feel like they can put together a type of offense that, that's going to be able to uh, at least keep them close enough. So I'm going to take the Argonauts to cover uh, at plus nine. Mm, that's what I was thinking as well, Jim. All right, so you're going to take the Argos at, uh, let's see, nine, 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 nine. Yes, okay, nine minus 105 at Bookmaker. We can give you that one. Toronto plus nine minus 105. You think that's a good play, huh? I, I do. I just think this is, this, th- these Argonauts are going to, th- this is the first game all year that they're going to be like head over heels excited about being in Canada and playing in this game. And when you do that, the defense steps up, everybody steps up. And, if, if, and now I love June Jones. Mm-hmm. I love what he's done. Uh, I, I love what the Ticats are capable of out of the East. And they're, they're uh, you know, after the Red Blacks getting beaten up by the Alouettes, maybe the Ticats are the team we look at coming out of the East. All said and done, I, I, uh, I just feel like this is too many points. I'm going to go with you on that one as well. Plus nine, minus 105 at Bookmaker. So uh, my, my initial thoughts completely agreed with your, uh, with, your, uh, with your analysis of these games, Jim. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, you know, when you're dealing with the Eskies offense that's going against the Stamps secondary, you know, uh, the run game is going to open up and their, their run game isn't very good. Uh, but I just feel like... Um, these two teams, there's too much excitement in the air. There's, there's, there's going to be big plays, and uh, I, 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 quite like, I quite like both of these situations. And sometimes when, when you cap a game and, and you make a bet and you lose, you can beat yourself up. But I, I quite, I'm very comfortable to go out uh, with these two bets if, if they don't come through. Both things make sense to me. Both plays make sense to me. And uh, this, is, this is when our league uh, starts taking things for real. All right. 
Sounds good. So once again, Jimmy the Bag and I both on Toronto plus nine. We're both on the Edmonton Calgary over 52 and a half minus 112. That was the line at wow. uh, at Heritage. And I also threw on the first half over uh, 26 plus 100. That was the line at Pinnacle. Billy Exotic has an interesting uh, comment. Mm -hmm. says stamps. And, and I know he likes the stamps in this game. says stamps in the home game where the total is greater than or equal to 52 are 14 and three. Now, I believe, you know, when we're talking about the stamps, uh, at home, it, every stat you could find would make them mm -hmm. look incredible. They're the class of the league. And, uh, and the Stamps know that the, the, the Great Cups in Edmonton, the Stamps know that they're going up there next week. Uh, so I, that's my only concern, mm -hmm. is, uh, is sort of a conservative rope-a-dope approach. Uh, until the second half. All right. Yeah. So let's quickly move on to uh, college football here. We have one game tonight, of course, uh, Florida State and uh, and Virginia Tech. Total opened really low at about 50, got bet all the way up to 57, then came down two points, down to 55, which is very interesting. Florida State is a, uh, is a, uh, a, a touchdown favorite here. Sportsbook Red says Florida State has potential to be a scary team. Yes, I absolutely agree with that. I think that uh, that uh, Taggart is a good fit, maybe a great fit for uh, for for the personnel that they uh, tend to have. Lamont Williams loves Florida State, but not at minus seven. Uh, Anthony L says no opinion on the football line looks about right. I was thinking about a shot with the over, but some interesting comments coming in, uh, uh, liking the under. Tom Reno Tomer says Florida State is underrated. They weren't even ranked the top 15. Francois will likely start slow off of the injury. Uh, Justin Searcy says Tech lost a lot of players in Florida. Offensive line is uh, is not great. But what happened? To, what was that? What was that? Okay. Bit XN likes Virginia Tech money line. Wow. wow. And Tom Reno likes says I like the under in Florida State. Got 55 and a half. No, I'm thinking wow. that uh, yeah. And Dom, Dom Ricci yeah. also likes Virginia Tech money he, line. He says Tech lost some defensive players, but the defensive core is one of the best. I think last year they held teams under 18 or 19 points. And then he says they're returning a lot of players on offense. Mm -hmm. Tomer says Francois will be inconsistent first game off the injury, but Tech has a young secondary. I think he will hit some big throws. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So you're seeing FSU offensive line. Just Tomarino Tomar says the FSU offensive line is young. No one knows how good they'll be. They aren't bad. They haven't played yet. Chase Gum says I'm on VTech. Plus the points. I think they keep it close. Mm, and R2D2 Finland says Florida State will lose. Vitala says Sharps on Florida State. Wow. Hmm. Interesting. Wow. You, uh, Chris Blanchard also says Francois will struggle early. Big day, Florida State wins 31-21. VTech always chokes in the fourth. So, but, but Big Dave's still liking the under. See, I was thinking that the over might be worth the play one way or another. One way or another. Yeah, interesting. I, I'm going to need to work on this game in the afternoon. Elio Rodriguez has his uh, big U.S. Open plays that he's mm -hmm. sharing with everybody. Uh, he was 2-1 this weekend. Today's on Goffin at plus 170. Goffin at plus 170, and he's on Serenko. I don't have the uh, odds for Serenko in front of me. And then Serenko. So he's on Goffin and Serenko. Okay. Uh, Dom Regis said, I didn't bet VTech money line. I'm uh, just respond responding on the post. Chris Blanchard says, I'm on tech all day. Mm -hmm. State always overrated. No, but there you go. Native Queen liking Florida State and the over. That's how I was leaning. Uh, I guess the big, the, the big question here is, is Francois going to struggle to start, or is he going to be uh, exploding out of the blocks? I don't think he's going to struggle that much, uh, for, personally. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've got to study, study it more, but I, I don't see him struggling too much. You know, he's had a lot of time to prep, a lot of time to regroup and recoup. I, I think, um, but I, 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 hear, uh, I hear what people are saying about Virginia Tech still being a strong defensive unit, even though they've sent a bunch of players to the mm -hmm. NFL last year. Uh, Thomas says, I don't think Sharps like that over at 55. Jay the Gifted, I'm on Tech plus the points. FSU has a new coach, new system. Yes, and quarterback just getting back after being out a whole year. He's going to start off slow. But on the other hand, uh, they could have gone with the other guy. They went with Francois. Why? Because they think he's ready. You know what I'm saying? Without doubt. If Francois, I mean, there was a, comp a quarterback competition, and Francois is the one who won it. So if he's going to start out slow, you know what I'm saying? If, if, it, if it was just him and they were like, this is our guy, there's no competition, yeah, maybe I'd have some questions with how he's going to start out. But he won a quarterback competition. They could have gone with the other guy. I agree completely. You they did the work. Yeah. They've done the work. And we got to allow these. And, and, and I make that mistake too often where I don't allow the experts who've mm -hmm. made the decisions to do the work for me. Uh, Anthony L., I like this approach, says, if you like VTech doing, well, why don't you take a three quarters of a unit on the spread and a quarter unit on the money line might be a good way to play it. That's smart thinking. Justin, seriously, the tech offense always concerns me. Jay Rose says special teams and defense will be key in FSU, Virginia Tech. I don't know, man. Uh, Native Queen, 
like in Florida State in the over, that's the way I was leaning as well. And I was thinking of maybe taking a shot with the uh, with the uh, with the Florida State team total on te- sorry team total over. I know everyone's saying like Virginia Tech always has good defenses. You know, I know people are saying it's a new coach, new system, blah 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 blah. I don't know, man. I think they're going to come out firing, play a fast pace. I think they're going to be relatively uh, uh, successful offensively. Well, wow, Indian Cowboy joining us. What a treat it is to have him run with us. Says, <laughs> Sharps are dumb. <laughs> Wait, let me, first comment for Indian Cowboy. Sharps are dumb. Could not agree with that comment more. There you go. Comment of the day. Sharps are dumb. Now, you know who is sharp? You. That sounds like that's like the iPhone, the iPad. You remember that? Remember when they were that like? Remember when they were like the man of the the man of the year is you? Do you remember when Time Magazine did that? Yeah. The man of the year is you. And now it's Indian Cowboy saying, you know who's sharp? You. You watching this video? Not me and Jim, but everyone else. All right, so let's see the rest of this. Uh, let's see. Uh, Indian Cowboy says total is high for a reason. Francois and Taggart have something to prove. Uh, let's see. What else is he saying? Uh, let's see. Anyone you know, who does the research is sharp. Wait, don't think some bums thing, are smarter than you. This is such a good point. Mm-hmm. Uh, Francois is, is motivated. All right, wait a minute. Ne- ne- next comment from Indy Cowboys. Pete and Jimmy are smart. All right, now, now you're losing this here. Now you're losing this. He's gone, too far. He's now gone, too, far. This, He's gone too far. Anyway, he likes the over for sure. Wow. Interesting. Yes. Great comment, Indian Cowboy. Yeah, what a great guy. Gave, gave us a lot of meat for jokes. Every single thing he posted gave us meat for jokes. We were just kidding about all that. I just love to make joke out of everything he was saying. But the last thing he says here, like the over for sure. That's what I was thinking as well. Lamont Williams, Florida State solo over first half. I was thinking Florida State team total overs first half and full game. Um, Twatty says, anyone know what Pete's talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Twate latte. Wow. Yes. No, that was a great comment in E Cowboy. Just everything you typed made me think of a new joke. So I was just making <laughs> jokes and jokes and jokes until I saw the final play, which he says, like the over for sure. That's what I was thinking as well. And I was liking Florida State. I don't know if Virginia- R2D2 uh, from Finland's got to run to the sauna and get some cold beer. Mm, what very a life. nice. What a life. Uh, Tomer says, FSU has arguably the best running back in the country, an extremely young offensive line. They will run a lot, in my opinion. Who, who will run a lot, in their opinion? FSU. FSU. Ray Williams says, FSU is not as talented as they used to be. Uh, Flipper says, Sharps bet early at 53 or less, and then betting back under 55 and a half for a two-point middle opportunity, mm-hmm. and says it's a chapter in his book. Yeah, well, I mean, they, when, when they bet it back, they got it at 57 because that total exploded all the way up to 57. Yeah. And Lamont Williams, you know what? Florida State is my team. Truck it, fuck it. Trust me, Florida State. Oh, run line. Wow. What does run line mean? Uh, spread. Right. Um, wow. Did I tell you that Flipper 13 came up to me? I was at Caesars mm-hmm. uh, early. I kept it quiet, you know, just because I wanted mm-hmm. to play the horses and play poker and just, you know. And uh, Flipper 13 came. But his wife came up to me and said, hi, I'm Flipper 13. And my head exploded. I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> Flipper 13, you're beautiful. But oh, then uh, Flipper 13 came ah. up. And- <laughs> <laughs> Jay Rowe says, neither team will have much success oh. throwing the football. Take the under. Justin, so, okay. Uh, Tom Reno, I'd lean Florida State, and I like the under. Hmm. Ray Williams, South Florida, Central Florida, and other Florida teams have taken from the pool. FSU used to dominate. Julian Toscano says, uh, says uh, I lean under. Hmm. Hmm. Well, we got lots of time to work on this. Yes. All right. We'll be back at 6 o'clock where we'll review. Maybe there will be more line. I, I have a feeling we're, we've seen all the line moves we're going to see in this game. I have a feeling we're going to come back at 6 o'clock, and it's going to be minus 7.55, and we're going to be debating uh, what to think about it. But certainly very interesting. We've gone a little bit over, but uh, Jimmy the Bag and I had a lot to cover. Thanks so much to everyone on this Labor Day for the great comments, and we will be back at 6 o'clock Eastern time. We love you all. Thank you so much.